I'm gonna call it like a Metrovania. Are you shitting me? Do I have to go through all of that again? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Temple of Terrors, a Minecraft puzzle adventure map. In the last episode, I tried to figure out how to crawl. In this episode, well, I guess... Kind of noticed something weird. Like the... Oh, there it is. Maybe? It's like the Minecraft audio. The Minecraft music isn't coming in on... It's kind of weird. It's like the Minecraft music isn't coming in. But anyways... Um, yeah, I figured out how to crawl. <clears throat> Can be placed on cut sandstone to keep you crawling? And a pickaxe. What am I doing? Oh. Can be... What's that right there? can be placed on cut sandstone, okay. Ah, that must be the cut sandstone. All right, now I'm stuck here. Right, or am I not stuck here? Okay, now I'm stuck. What's this for? Okay, why am I now suddenly stuck? infinite wisdom, how do I get unstuck? I don't get it. What happened? I was doing so well. Oh. Wait, how does that work? Yeah, whatever. Oh, I placed that. Oh! Okay, that's where I grabbed that from. Do I... Break that, keep going, shift down, and keep crawling. Okay! All right. We're, uh, doing something, I think. Oh, I get it. I kind of got to leapfrog the iron blocks a little bit, or? Nope, wasn't able to. Should I have picked that iron block up on my way back? All right, so I definitely need to have this down. And that down. Oh, that might be what I had to do. Okay. So, so far, I really like this map. It's such a unique premise on... It's just a very, very unique premise. Oh, I solved it. I figured it out. But this map is such a unique premise. You know, finding totems, sacrificing them to gain new abilities. 
Oh, didn't I already grab this totem? I thought I did. Nope, that chest is still locked. I still don't know what these various little push buttons do. Or why the, they look like push buttons anyways that are just kind of suspended there. Aha! Still got it. But yeah, I think this is such a unique map. It's a... Oh, what do they call it? It's a metro... It's definitely... It definitely strikes me as a... I'm gonna call it like a metrovania. Are you shitting me? Do I have to go through all of that again? What even happened there? Oh, well, at least the iron blocks and stuff come back. Okay. I guess that's not so bad then. So this definitely strikes me as like a Metrovania style of map. Where uh, you complete the map, or you complete the level, and then you come back and redo it, but with abilities, different abilities. So there's multiple paths to, uh, to beat the same map. Oh. Oh. So if I hit that, I'm crawling. There we go. And I uh, so I really like that. This is very unique among among survival maps, not even survival maps, adventure and puzzle maps I've done in the past. The crawling thing is definitely kind of cool. I didn't I didn't know that crawling was a mechanic in in Minecraft. Well, I, I might have known from playing some other adventure maps, but. Uh, I didn't realize that crawling was really a thing. What I thought was crawling... Hang on. Or what I what was actually crawling in some of those maps, I thought was just I... They phased me through, like, a block or something. Not that my character was actually, like, crawling. Now, here's the offering this time. How odd. All right. The offering wasn't there last time. I don't get it. Why are the offerings suddenly appearing? I don't get it. So is there like a... So how do I keep going? How do I advance here? So if I try to step on the cobblestone at all, it disappears out from underneath me. I can get here. I don't know. Let me see if there's solution elsewhere. Oh look, there's an offering up there too. It doesn't look like there's really another way that I can go, mostly because I can't jump at the present. So this really is my only way forward. I'm still crawling at this point. Is there some leap of faith shit I gotta do? Okay.
That ain't it. So I don't think it's a leap of faith thing. I would hope it isn't a leap of faith thing. But at this point, I really don't know what else to try. Maybe it is a leap of faith. It's got to be a leap of faith. It's the only thing that I can think of it maybe being. But that wouldn't make sense for it to be a leap of faith. They would have given me some sort of hint, right? So let's see here. So you go here, you go here. This is really like the Dark Souls of maps. So I did actually play through Dark Souls. I did play through all the Dark Souls. Uh, I did it co-op because I am a pathetic excuse for an individual, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> I actually beat. Uh, I actually beat three co-op. I think even on up to New Game Plus, and I. Uh, they're what those buttons are for, and I I did uh, I did end up beating three on on New Game Plus as well. Uh, it was really really fun. Definitely not the kind of game that I would personally play by myself, anyways. Uh, it's it's I like a challenge as much as the next person, but. I don't want to spend the amount of time that Dark Souls mandates of me to be good. Nope, it was not a leap of faith. Yeah, so I just don't want to spend... Yeah, I just don't want to spend the amount of time that Dark Souls mandates of me to be a good player of Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I did have fun playing through his co-op. And the co oper that I was playing with was insanely good. And he was very well studied on the lore of Dark Souls. So I kind of got the whole breakdown of why everything why everything uh, in Dark Souls happened. So while we were playing through the game, not only would he know where everything is, uh, have really good breakdowns of, you know, hey, you're going to want to put this armor on because it definitely suits your build. Like had everything memorized. So it was really fun playing through with him because I never felt at, at a single point that I wasn't in control of what was happening. I, I guess you could say in a, in, a, in a way I wasn't in control because he was giving me uh, hints as to what to do next. But uh, yeah, it was super fun to play through co-op. I think it is a very, very good co-op game and Three especially, figuring out how to... Actu or actually, no, two was the one that figured out uh, the summoning better. Because I think three, it was kind of up to... Uh, um, three, it was definitely not up to you whether... Or one, it was definitely not up to you as to whether you would succeed or not in it. Or summoning, summoning worked very poorly in one. It worked pretty good in two, and three. They kind of refined the system. Now, am I supposed to even go this way? I'm curious. I wonder if I can, if there's a path forward going this way. No, there ain't. So I just screwed myself. Just ignore me. Ooh. Ooh. Nope. I am living with the mistakes that I've made. So then how do I get past that? I don't see a blatantly obvious path forward. Like, I really don't see a blatantly obvious path forward. 
So I'm pretty sure that, uh, so I know this is all correct. Going through here, I am solid that, that is the correct answer. I just had a heart attack because, so on OBS, it shows both my recording and my streaming timers next to each other because you can do both with OBS. And I didn't see my, and I looked it down and I didn't see, I looked, I saw my streaming timer at zero and had a heart attack. That would have just been damn unfortunate. So I'm actually recording this pretty late in the day. Uh, I I really need to get better personally at at uh, slotting out time for recording. And when I do record, doing multiple recordings in a single session. Because right now I do a single recording a day. And like today being uh, Saturday, for this episode to go up on Sunday... I was busy. I was basically busy doing yard work with my family. I went over to my parents' house to help them out with uh, cleaning up their yard, getting stuff over to their warehouse for uh, getting ready for winter, basically. Uh, getting all the patio furniture out of there, because obviously we're not going to be using patio furniture for the next several months, being as though this is the Midwest and winter is a thing. So this is definitely the way forward. Second offering. Oh, so I can just kind of... Well, I kind of wung it there a little bit. I think I get it now. Not really, I don't think I get it, but I'm going to try and figure out how to... So there's a little... There's a slight delay between when you step on the cobblestone there and when it jerks out from underneath you. So I'm going to try and take advantage of that. Of that slight delay. And I think that's what I got to do here. But yeah, so like all day, I really wanted to record today. Oh. But I didn't get the chance because I was doing yard work. Oh, uh, I am recording right now, but I got other things that I would... I and Like I got some friends waiting to do a Civ 4. I think it's Civ 4 right now. Uh, so I'm trying to quick get this recorded and at least get this rendered. So I can then upload it. Upload it. Because the upload and thumbnail process, once I get the... So I started doing something kind of new with my thumbnails where I will take an image of... Yes, I will take an image and then put my the, the logo that I made and the part number on that, speaking of which, and I will make that, and I'll, so I used to do like a static, a static background for my thumbnail. So I would just make a consistent thumbnail and then just keep incrementing that static thumbnail. Well, now I actually started doing live images of, I started doing images from my time playing the map. And I think that definitely gives it a more refined, damn it. And I think that definitely gives it a more refined polish. Like, uh, it makes it look a little bit more professional. Uh, so I'm trying to go for a little bit more of an air of professionalism while doing Minecraft. Uh, doing Minecraft while doing YouTube. Uh, I would say it's just a different mindset of... I'd say it's just a different mindset of of running a YouTube channel more like a business than as well. I'd say running if if you want to be successful in YouTube, and I am definitely not the person you should be looking to as far as like success goes in YouTube. Let, let me tell you that. But I believe if you want to be successful in YouTube, you need to run you you need to run the channel like it's a business. So you want to try and have an air of some level of professionalism in the presentation of the video. Um, you want to make sure you have good audio. You want to make sure like your thumbnail looks good. Uh, you want to make sure the content is of some quality, but you definitely still want it to with your own personal signature on it. Now, you know, after you've presented this as a good video, you know, you have a professional looking eye catching uh, thumbnail. Um, 
that's when after that then you can be silly and have all, and do all kinds of different youtube shenanigans but up until that point capturing the attention it should be there should be some i believe there should be some semblance of professionalism and with any sort of content consumer as yourself you would expect i would say i would expect you know how did i do this last time How did I do it last time? How the hell did I do that last time? Why am I not doing this? Gosh, where was I on this tangent that I now need to go on longer because I have to keep doing this stupid crawling puzzle. Anyways, uh, you know, you wanna be eye grabbing. You wanna have a, and as a content consumer, you would want your content to be released, you know. Are you shitting me? Damn it. You as a content consumer, like, uh, let's take Disney Plus, for example. Disney Plus, every week, at the same time, releases a new, a new episode of some content. If I don't like that they do that, I prefer the Netflix model where, hey, here's all the content. Do with it what you like. And I hate that Disney Plus does that, but this is, my, this is our reality now, so we have to accept it. Or you'd expect your favorite TV show to, you know, we're releasing every Wednesday at nine Wednesdays. You would expect it to be released nine Wednesday night, right? If that's what time it's slotted for release. It's the same thing I believe with YouTube, where a content creator grows to, where a content consumer grows to expect that content will be released consistently at the same time. Some of my favorite YouTube channels I've noticed, not only, you know, they've got well, for one, I actually seek out their content, but I, uh, you know, they've got good narration, good sound, but most importantly, the content is released very consistently. So you always can expect, so I, I consume a lot of uh, Let's Plays, a lot of uh, gaming content, uh, particularly Total War Warhammer 2. I can see, I watch Monsters Abound a lot. Funny I'm, for, funny I'm talking of him when, I'm referencing him when talking of uh, professionalism. How did I do this? Damn, it won't let me. Oh, this is aggravating. This is a cool map, but this part is aggravating. But yes, you would expect your content creator to release the same time every day. Which is why I like Monsters Abound so much. He releases, you know, right around the time I usually take my lunch break at work. So for lunch, I get to watch Total War Warhammer 2 content. And it's he's genuinely funny. He's genuinely funny, but most importantly, the content is consistent. You know, I as a fan have come to expect, you know, content to be released before I go on lunch and he consistently delivers. So in that way, you know, very similar to a business. So in a roundabout way, the very long winded spiel that I'm using to stall for time, why I fail at beating this puzzle is that a YouTube should be run kind of like a business. If you're of a, if you're of a type of media, if you, if you provide a type of media, such as gaming, for example, which I do a lot of, I'd say the vast majority, damn near everything I do is gaming you would expect that a gaming channel would be able to release content on a daily basis. To a point, I would say, once you're a very established channel where uh, the name of your channel alone basically guarantees that there will be views on your, on your uh, content, then you can kind of taper back, maybe release a little bit inconsistently, or if you do it full time, you can basically bombard, bombard, uh, I bombard such a negative word. Do I just go for it? That's not it either. I thought going for it would totally be it. So another guy I watched the Rad Brad, he's got like 15 million viewers. He does it full time. So he can, 
he can kind of have a more regular schedule because he had reaches such a wide audience that that uh, he can kind of get away with a little bit of sporadic he can get away with kind of sporadic releases like when a new game comes out you know it'll be it'll be multiple uploads of that game in a single day you know I'm definitely at 300 some odd subscribers I'm definitely not at the point where I can release content sporadically and expect the name bleaker to carry forth the content but there does become a point where I believe you can uh, kind of taper back on a consistent upload schedule when your channel name alone is enough to drive views to you. So it's really kind of interesting uh, thinking of YouTube as a business, which I know many people, uh, many more successful channels than I, make a, make a living entirely off of the business of YouTube. Uh, some of my personal favorite channels, I believe, are... Actually, I tend to shy away personally from larger channels. Um, uh, I, I do tend to shy away from watching larger channels. I do, I do prefer to support channels that have under 700. I do prefer to watch content from channels that have less than 700,000 subscribers. Uh, notable exceptions being uh, Monsters Abound. No, not Monsters Abound. How the hell are you supposed to do that? Notable set exceptions being the Rad Brad, um, Northern Lion. That's that's pretty much it. I, I do try to keep, I do try to basically keep my uh, my focus on smaller YouTube channels. You know, support small YouTube basically. Plus, I believe that at times larger channels can just like release shit as like the most clickbaity shit you've ever imagined and be successful. I hate clickbait titles more than anything. And I believe larger YouTube channels, oh my god, they're like the worst for it. They'll release ambiguous titles, big news, you'll never guess what I did. And try to make the stupidest clickbaity title. And the quality of the content is shit. Or They'll make you think something big's happening when it's just a mundane video, but because it has a clickbait title, and you want to know what the hell's going on, because some you know, they're so huge. I think that's why I unsubscribed from Markiplier. Like, you used to watch Markiplier content fairly regularly, but then it struck me as... It, I think it became a little bit too... corporate for my taste. I don't know. I mean, Mark strikes me as a pretty cool dude, but... You know, it's not fair to say things negatively about YouTube channels, mostly because my opinion ultimately does not matter. Um, they're good at what they do. I'm able to, like, speed crawl or something? I don't know how to do this. I do not know how to do this, and I find that frustrating. So, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm going to monkey my way through this and see if I can't figure out how the hell to get past this. And I forgot the pickaxe, so, um, wow, this is frustrating. All right, I'll catch you guys later.